this is Dr. M. I'm going to talk to you about writing formulas from names. So let's get started. And by formulas, I mean ionic formulas. So here I have a, um, a name of a chemical compound, cobalt bromide. Let's see over here, right? And so cobalt we know is a metal. And then bromide is coming from bromine, which is a non metal right so we this is an ionic compound and um, so ionic compounds we follow the these rules that I'm giving you are for ionic compounds so our first step is to identify the symbols and charges of our compound so here we have cobalt bromide I need to identify the symbol for cobalt cobalt is over here on the periodic table so here's cobalt, and then this three tells us the charge. So plus three or three plus bromide. This is coming from bromine over here. Okay, when bromine becomes a negative ion, and what charge does it have? Minus one, right? Because it's in group 17, it has seven valence electrons. It wants to get one more to be eight, and so it'll have a negative one charge, that whole column. Step two says to balance the positive and negative charges by doing swap and drop. So now uh, we need to have these add up to make a zero charge. So we have th three positives here, so that means we will need three negatives on this side. So we can also do this by our swap and drop. So I'll rewrite this here. So swap and drop allows us to do that balancing very easily. So we do, so swap and we drop, right? So we drop, the charges become subscripts. So now we have CO, we just have one of those, we don't write a one. And then we have three of the bromide ions. And so we do a subscript three. And then our third step is to reduce to smallest whole number ratio. And so this is already, sorry, already reduced. Okay, so we just leave it as is. This is the final formula for this compound. Now let's do another um, name here. We have mercury sulfide. So again, I have an ionic compound. I have metal and nonmetal. Um, I need to now identify mercury. What is the for the uh, symbol for mercury? So you might have to search around a little bit for this one. I know where it is. It's down here. And mercury has this different symbol, Hg. So and it's one of those metals that can have different charges. So it has told us we have been given the charge of plus two or two plus, okay? So we have, and then sulfide, that comes from sulfur. So remember, it's a non-metal. So we're gonna find those non-metals over in this right-hand area, see where it says non-metal. So we have sulfur and what charge does sulfur have? It has six valence. It wants to have two to become eight. So it has a minus two charge, minus two. Now here we wanted, we can do our, we'll re, rewrite to, uh, we want to balance the positive and negative. Uh, we could use swap and drop, or you might even recognize that, right, that this has, um, we have plus two and minus two and they cancel each other out. But we'll do the swap and drop just so you can see, right? We have what happens. So down here, reduce the smallest whole number ratio. So we would want to reduce these to ones, right? So the final would be HGS. This is the final formula. So some of you can see that you can go directly from this, the plus two and the minus two and get to this. But some of you, if you're doing swap and drop, remember you have to read this last up here to reduce to the smallest whole number. Now let's get a little trickier. We'll have add one now. What do we have over here? Sulfate. This is one of our polyatomic ions. 
So we're going to go through the same steps, identify the symbols and charges. So the first one here is lead. Lead is one of those um, metals down here that has different charges. So uh, lead is Pb, and we have the plus. The, this Roman numeral tells us we have a plus 4 charge. And now we have sulfate. So we have to remember that polyatomic ion, right? This is a poly atomic ion and a, a sulfate is this SO4 and it has a minus 2 charge and so step 2 let's do the uh, we are going to balance positive and negative charges by doing swap and drop so I won't rewrite it I'm just going to do this here I'll do the swap and drop and so what do we end up with we get Pb2 and SO4. So we have to put those parentheses, remember, around that whole polyatomic ion, and we put a 4. And we can recognize this polyatomic ion. It's, we have two nonmetals. Polyatomic means many atoms. Uh, the, this 8 tells us we have this oxygen here, sulfur and oxygen together. Um, now we have to look at our last step, reduce to smallest whole number ratio. So you can see we have 2 and 4, and this can be simplified to Pb. So 2 can go into this, becomes 1. 2 goes into 4 2 times. So now we have Pb, SO4, 2. Okay, so this is our final formula. Okay, I have one more for you. Um, sodium carbonate. And here's our sodium. Where's sodium? So sodium has a, doesn't start with S, right? The symbol, the symbol is actually Na. Na plus 1. And why is there no, no Roman numeral? That's because sodium is in group 1, has one valence electron that it loses. It will always have a plus 1 charge, right? This whole group here, plus 1, including hydrogen. Well, typically, um, so all these metals will have a plus 1 charge as well as hydrogen. Um, so sodium is a plus 1. And then what's carbonate? So that's one of these, remember, again, a poly atomic ion and it's so it's going to be carbon and oxygen right so co3 2 minus um, and then we'll do our swap and drop so in this case we have two sodiums we only have one carbonate so we don't need any parentheses and here we go um, step three, reduce the whole, smallest whole number ratio. That's not necessary because it's already reduced. Okay, so sometimes you don't need to do step three. Sometimes you do. You have to look carefully. Remember with the polyatomic ions, we don't ever want to change our um, any of the subscripts on that. We'll use parentheses and add a subscript. And uh, that's it for writing formulas from names.